My name is Jonas, and I'm working at the digital design studio US2. We are about 100 people based in London and here in Malmö. I was invited today to talk about our new publishing initiatives, and especially uh, our new release paper cut that we will release in a few in a few weeks. Looks like that. And paper cut, I'll talk about it quite a lot here. Uh, it's three things you could say. It's a publishing platform. It could work as a storefront, and it's also a storytelling experiment. Um, so these are the three main things. And the last thing, the storytelling experiment, a new genre. That's what really excites me, and that is you know, what we are trying to do. We try to make use of the iPad to tell new kinds of stories. But first, some uh, some background. Digital publishing right now is a really, really interesting field. It's loads of stuff going on. It's small independent studios, it's big publishing houses, it's uh, filmmakers moving into this field, uh, it's startups and new initiatives, and loads of ideas just come into this field. So uh, we decided we want to get in a, get, do this as well. And the main thing is here that the, 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 the main question kind of who is a publisher when it comes to digital publishing, because it's so new, it's so open. So we decided that we wanted to do something as well. So a few months ago, we did our first children's book app called Nursery Rhymes. Uh, Nursery Rhymes was a, great, was a great learning process for us. And um, it, was, it was quite successful. It was featured as the app of the week in both US and UK for both iPhone and iPad. And we learned a lot how to create one of these, one of these stories and how you could work with it. Um, yeah, as I said, it was a fantastic learning process for us. And we drew everything by hand and tried to kind of keep this, this handmade feel to it. And it was really successful, and we lost loads of money when we did this. <laughs> so, so I brought a graph, actually, because um, compared to other publishers, we are very open with all of our figures. So I brought a graph. Um, and I'm showing you this for three main reasons. The first reason is the cost. This app, Nursery Rhymes, cost us about £60,000 to create. That's a lot of money. And, and this is the first three months. But so far, we've probably made half of it back. So this tells us that we need to do this in a cheaper way. We need to produce some kind of um, publishing platform that makes it cheaper to do this, but that we still can innovate and we still can experiment. We still can do new things. And uh, the other thing that, or the, the 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 other reason why I wanted to show you this, is because of the the, the power of Apple. So you see here in the beginning. The peaks, that's when we were uh, app of the week, in first in UK and then in the US. First for iPad, and then, well, here, the last one is the, is the iPhone in the UK as well. And after that, it just drops, and that's how it works. So the power of Apple and to be visible in the App Store, that is, you, you, you need to be there, and you need to be visible on the App Store, otherwise it just drops. So, and the third reason, is that, I mean, this app was really, really successful, but we were, after the Apple promotion, we sold less than 200 copies a day. But we were still among the top selling apps. So this gives you, in the book charts, I should say, so this gives you an idea of the size of the market. So there's a lot of talk about it, but the market is still really small. We all know, though, and I'm 100% convinced, that if I should show you, or if I when I will show you a similar graph in a year's time, or in two years' time, it will look completely different. Because this industry is changing so fast, and it's growing really, really fast. And that is just really, really exciting. I, I, I love it. Um, so, about the visibility. Um, this is just a screen grab from the App Store. And this tells you two obvious things. You need a really big brand, on this side, it's all about Disney, Disney all over the place. Or you need a storefront. So you have Kindle, you have Kobo, you have Marvel, you have all of that. So you need a big brand or you need a storefront to be visible in the App Store. So therefore, we created Papercut. And Papercut, as I said before, 
is three things mainly. It's a publishing platform that makes it a lot cheaper to produce stories. Uh, it's a storefront, so we actually can have some visibility in the App Store. And for and foremost, and what gets me really, really excited, it's a storytelling experiment. We want to explore the possibilities to try to create new stories. And when we... I need to look at my notes. Uh, so, when we started to create Papercut, we, kind of, we started with a quite basic question. And the question was, what happens with a book if you remove the pages? What happens? What's left? And Papercut is, in many ways, our answer to that question. So, this is how it works. Here, we have a, a, a reading window, a reading frame. And it's a scrollable reading frame. So we remove the pages, you scroll through the text. But this frame is quite small, and therefore we know where the reader is in the text. And because of that, we can trigger related events on, based on where you are in the story. So we can actually build the whole screen, we can actually change the story depending on where you are in the story. So for this story, which is, I should say, is created by Richard Beard, so we invited three authors to actually create stories in collaboration with us. So, uh, so Richard Beard wrote the story in, uh, in collaboration with us, and we invited, uh, and, and, we, and we did all the visuals, and then we invited other people as well. So the Swedish band This Is Head made all the music for this story. We had an audio designer to create all the, the background soundscapes and so on. And, and so, so you, you scroll through the text, and, and when you come to a certain position, a certain sentence in the text, triggers, uh, events are triggered. And that could be video, that could be typography, like in this case, uh, mu music is going on in the background, audio scapes and so on. This is another screen grab from the same story. And this story is kind of half audiobook and half written text. So we try to explore with the format, to explore possibilities of, of, of of telling stories in a new way, really. And here we have the, the background videos coming on as well. And this story takes place in Tokyo. So, and a blue origami crane is really important to the story. So the background is kind of folding itself into this blue crane as you read through the story. Uh, this is a screen grab from the second story that we did. Uh, it's written by Nadifa Mohammed. And this is just another example how we can use exactly the same concept. We have a small reading frame, we know where you are in the text when you read it, and therefore we can trigger events based on what's happening in the story. And for this story, we animate objects and, and letters and quotes in the right time. We, we kind of animate them in, so we create this, this continuous flow, and as the story unfolds, the whole, the whole story is coming together, if that makes sense. Um, it's a screen grab from the third story. It's written by Laura Dockrill, and she also did all the illustrations for this story. So she actually was drawing everything by hand. And so when that guy, when that swimmer is mentioned in the text, he actually pops up and he has, he has a sound of his own and, and, and you can move him around, it's all interactive. Um, and we also have loads of background sounds going on, and a band called Franco Bolo did all the music for it, and so on. Uh, I'll show a short video that hopefully gives you a bit more, hopefully explains the concept a little bit more. This video is about Richard Beard, who wrote the first, the first story. Once a week, I go for a drink with Stuart Marsh to a Tokyo Irish bar called Dubliners. The pub is across the street from the 109 department store and we sit on the second floor balcony and sweat Guinness and look down at the view of high school girls. My name is Richard Beard and I'm the author of James Joyce EFL Teacher. This is a story which had uh, some success in print um, and then Jonas and us two gave me the opportunity to bring it to paper cut. I only Actually, really had the page to work with once changes. I decided I wasn't going to work in screenplays or on the stage. Uh, I wanted to write prose. And then that stayed the same for quite a while. And I think it's only now that the new technology, and the, the, I think also the vision of people who are working with the new technologies and making 
life interesting again for writers of narrative prose. I can bring ideas to paper cut and uh, those can be transformed with the help of a visual designer so that I can almost get more value out of my words through the new format and that opens up all sorts of opportunities. Um, I still love writing on a page but I like doing this too. So with Papercut, we're trying to do this publishing platform that makes it a lot cheaper to produce new kind of stories. We also did this storefront, and for and foremost, we wanted to explore the possibilities with trying to tell new kind of stories. And these three stories are just examples of how you can use this kind of scrollable um, storytelling platform to create new kinds of stories. And, and I'm just really curious to invite more authors uh, and see what happens, kind of, because I want to explore the possibilities with this, really. That's about it. Thank you.